Apple held their annual Worldwide Developer Conference at their Cupertino headquarters today. The company announced all sorts of features and products that will soon come to the watch, iPhone, Mac, iPad, and other Apple products. CEO Tim Cook kicked off the event with a few new features coming to the Apple TV. So we're introducing multi-user support for tvOS. tvOS also delivers Apple Music. So we're extending support to two of the best and most popular game controllers available. Xbox One S and PlayStation DualShock 4. Now let's talk about Apple Watch. Apple showed off new watch faces, along with a few new features coming to the watch. First, we're bringing more Apple apps to watch the new audiobooks app to let you listen to Apple Books, and voice memos so you can easily record your thoughts, and calculator. And we're now making it possible to create apps that run independently on the watch, no longer requiring a companion iPhone app. And you can stream great content like podcasts, music, live sports games. Now to make it even easier for you to discover these apps, we're excited to bring the App Store to Apple Watch. The Neo Noise app uses a microphone to detect decibel levels and can notify you if it's reached a level that could impact your hearing over time. Also coming to the Apple Watch, cycle tracking. Knowing more about your menstrual cycle gives you a window into your health, from simply ensuring that you're prepared to understanding your personal patterns and irregularities. Cycle tracking is also available without a watch in the health app in iOS. Now let's talk about iOS, the world's most powerful mobile operating system. Yes, it's iOS 13. Two long-awaited features are finally coming to the iPhone, dark mode and swipe to type. We are bringing dark mode to iOS. Look at that, the gorgeous dark wallpaper. Our notifications look great. Let's take a look at our widgets. Look just awesome. Let's take a look at some apps. We'll start with news. Check it out with a gorgeous, dark appearance. So nice. And your calendar, your daily events have never looked so awesome on this really beautiful palette. And notes. Now, when you type, you can swipe. Just like that while some of the main apps are getting all sorts of new features. I can go through some of my recent playback. Of course, start playing some music here. And now, for the first time ever, time-synced lyrics. But of course, there's much more to iOS 13, starting with apps. Let's start with Safari, Mail, and Notes. Now, Safari has new options to quickly change text sizing and has per website preferences. Mail gets desktop class text formatting controls, including support for rich fonts. And Notes gets this beautiful new gallery view, support for shared folders, and much more. But where we really went deep is with reminders. We've completely reinvented the app, rewriting it from the ground up to make it more intelligent, intuitive, and powerful, and easier than ever to create reminders. Also getting a bit of an overhaul, Apple Maps. We've been driving and flying all across the United States, collecting land and aerial data to add significant new detail to the map. With Look Around, I get a gorgeous, high-definition 3D view. There will be new privacy controls as well. We always protect your identity and activity, and there's no need to flip a switch to ask Maps to start respecting your privacy. Now, for the first time, you can share your location to an app just once and then require it to ask you again next time it wants it. Some apps try to work around these protections by scanning for Bluetooth or Wi-Fi signals to infer your location. Well, we're shutting the door on that abuse as well. Sign in with Apple is the fast, easy way to sign in without all the tracking. A simple API allows a developer to put a sign in with Apple button right in their app. You just tap it and you're authenticated with Face ID on your device, logged in with a new account without revealing any new personal information. Mimoji are getting more features like jewelry, lipstick, hats, and stickers created automatically based on your Mimoji. The camera is getting improved lighting effects, 
you'll be able to apply photo effects to videos, and you can finally rotate videos. The photo apps is getting a redesign and some new features too. And you can see videos like this time lapse play automatically for me, really bringing my library back to life. CarPlay is getting a bit of an overhaul, while Siri shortcuts will now suggest automations based on your habits. This year, we have our biggest update to CarPlay since the beginning. It all starts with a CarPlay dashboard, where you can now have your music next to your maps, and you still have room for Siri smart suggestions, like a garage door opener when you get close to home, or a view of your next calendar event. Shortcuts enable you to use your apps through Siri, and in the Shortcuts app, you can create your own personalized multi-step shortcut. The iPad is also getting an overhaul, with Apple giving it its own operating system, iPad OS. In addition to the new iPhone features, the iPad will be getting more multitasking features, like split screen and slide over. But what I think is super cool is watch what happens when I swipe over. I can now pin my widgets right on my home screen. There are also more multitasking gestures, along with support for drag and drop. While the Files app on the iPad will be more functional, and folders in the iCloud Drive will be shareable. For instance, in iCloud Drive, we now support folder sharing. And the iPad will finally support thumb drives and SD cards, which will show up in the Files app. That's right, you can now plug in a thumb drive. You'll even be able to change fonts as Apple's adding fonts to the App Store to be used in apps. There's finally a new Mac Pro. This is the new Mac Pro, and it's incredible! The base model of the new Mac Pro has an 8-core Intel Xeon processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and a 256 gigabyte solid-state drive. It starts at $6,000 and will be available this fall. Of course, a computer that powerful needs a display to go along with it. So Apple has launched the Pro Display XDR, a 32-inch LCD 6K Retina display with a super wide viewing angle and what Apple calls extreme dynamic range. The monitor starts at $5,000 and will also be available this fall. Of course, there wasn't just a new Mac. There's also a new Mac OS called Catalina. The biggest news for Mac OS? iTunes is finally being broken up into three separate apps. Apple Music, Podcasts, and TV. Because Apple Music and Catalina is the best music app we've ever made. With its singular focus on music, it's so simple, but it has all the powerful music features you expect from iTunes, all while being just blazingly fast. Let's turn our attention to podcasts. It brings a dedicated podcast listening experience to the Mac. And it features all the great features you're used to in iOS, like Listen Now, where you can see new episodes and keep track of your listening across all of your devices. And finally, the Apple TV app, your new home for TV and music on the Mac. Now, you'll love having access to Watch Now, including all your great channels like HBO and Showtime. And it has all your purchased movies for iTunes as well. The iPad will soon be able to function as a second monitor for the Mac. Now it's great, you can spread out your work right across to your iPad. While support is coming for a whole lot of voice control. Voice control lets you control your Mac entirely with your voice. And not just that, we're also bringing it to iOS as well. There are new security features like Find My and Activation Lock. And it has a new twist because it can now even locate Apple devices that are offline. Now, this is particularly important for Macs because often your laptop is folded up in a bag, asleep, and no longer on the network. So in the unfortunate event that your Mac ever is stolen, the thief will find it completely useless because they can't even install or boot it unless you reactivate it with your credentials. Of course, other apps are getting new and improved features. Now, you'll find, of course, the beautiful new photo browsing experience in Photos, the, an updated start page in Safari, the brand new gallery view in Notes, and a completely redesigned Reminders app. But also, for the first time, we're bringing screen time to the Mac. Now, it has all the same great features from iOS, so you and your family can now understand the complete picture of your use across all your devices, and all the limits are enforced across all of your devices. We think this is going to be great for families. And if there's an iPad app you love, you may soon be able to play it on the Mac. 
Apple's Project Catalyst will allow developers to create Mac apps based on iPhone apps. And it's new technology that lets developers quickly and efficiently create apps for the Mac based on their existing iPad apps. Now, there are over a million iPad apps out there, and we think some of them would be fantastic on the Mac. Apple also announced new products and features that will make it easier for developers to create augmented reality apps. And check this out, motion capture. Just point your camera at a person and we can track in real time the positions of their head, their torso, and their limbs and feed it as an input into the AR experience. And that was the 2019 WWDC. What did you think? Any features or products you're especially excited about? Let us know in the comments. Have a great week. Thank you.